It is six o'clock in the morning and you join myself and Liga here in Italy and we're just about to take on the Lake Como Trail 30k. We are super excited to be back out racing in the mountains. We're kitted up, the race numbers are on and I've got my GoPro with me. So let's get outside and we're going to bring you guys along on the adventure. As we left the hotel and headed to the start, coffee's in hand obviously because it was still quite early and a hit of caffeine was very much needed. We were both contemplating the day ahead in the mountains and conditions were looking a little bit overcast and the forecast said we might get some rain later on in the race. Now the Lake Como Trail 30K has a very unique way of getting to the start line and that is by ferry across the stunning Lake Como. So we jumped on board, sat back, tried to relax to settle those race morning nerves by taking in all the epic views as we made that short 45 minute trip round to the beautiful starting location. Purvis and this is Run for Adventure and you join me down at this stunning starting location in the Piazza Mazzini here in Bellagio, Italy. I've got to say it, what an incredible way to get to the start line of a race, something I've never experienced before. So the route we're going to be running today obviously starts here in Bellagio and then we're going to be heading out on the mountain trails and running all the way back to Lecco. Uh, there should be some incredible views of Lake Como as we go but the route is around 32k and we've got 1,800 meters of elevation to do along the way so there's a few ups and downs but it is so good to be back out in the mountains so we've got about half an hour till start so I'm going to go and find Liga and then we're going to get running. Leaving the beautiful Bellagio up these steep steps, gets the old legs working and the lungs breathing hard. Nice warm up for the race ahead. We've got a good 300 runners, I should imagine. So it's going to be an epic day out in the mountains. How are you feeling, Liga? Good. Yeah. I'm that good. I'll try not to yeah. say it. Awesome, man. So good to be back on the start line of a great mountain race. Lots of adventures lie ahead, I should imagine. The race route started with around about a mile of tarmac with some pretty steep cobbled streets thrown in for good measure. The atmosphere at the start was amazing and you could really feel all the energy coming from the other runners around you. I'm happy to say that tarmac didn't last for long and it soon started to change into single track and we headed off into the woods to start our mountain adventure. Okay, so after about a mile of uh, hard standing tarmac, we eventually turned off onto the trails and into the woods and 
this is steep steep rooted muddy pretty technical Ooh, hopefully it will uh flatten out a bit in a minute but definitely got the old calves burning everybody seems to be in good spirits though give us a cheer guys yeah <laughs> Everybody's loving life in the mountains. <laughs> Just over two miles in now, and for the race, there was obviously a, quite a big mandatory kit list to take because it's a mountainous race, and we had to have the GPX file on our watches. So we thought it might be a bit tricky to navigate, but the route is so well signed. I would say every, what, 50 yards, we have got a bit of blue tape, showing us the way to go, so it's super straightforward. And we're working our way to the first checkpoint, which it's just that over 10K. I think that's pretty much 10K of up, but yeah, going good. Everything's kind of regulated a bit now. Breathing's pretty good. Legs don't feel as pumped, so that's definitely a good sign. How are you feeling, Liga? Yeah, good. Yeah, everything's settled down. Yeah, it's better now. Good to be back in the mountains. Oh yeah. It's so good to be back. You just can't beat it. I mean, in Cornwall we run in some mega places and I never take it for granted, but there's something so epic about getting out in the mountains, running new trails, having a new adventure and working your way to a high summit. Oh, wicked. I'm walking up that hill and I forgot I've got my poles with me. Schoolboy error, but check out that view. We're not that high, but look at that view of Lake Como, man. And we're gonna have this view pretty much for the whole race. So that's definitely gonna give us energy as we work our way up to that summit. The poles are definitely making it easier. Wait for me, Liga, wait for me. Okay, so what I can say to start off with, with the route is it's very different to what we we're expecting. So it's not necessarily like Chamonix trails, you know, dry, rocky trails. It's pretty muddy, it's pretty slippy. It's quite similar to being back at home. League is in front of me banging the mud out of her shoes to try and get some traction. So uh, that's how muddy it is. Obviously you're in the woods, so it's very sheltered. And we have been having a bit of rain while we've been here, so it's pretty slippy. I'll give you a quick sort of kit breakdown. So on my feet are the ever trusty Socony Exodus Ultra 2s. Liga's wearing her beloved Peregrine 10s. She loves that shoe. It gives her lots of confidence when she's out on the trails. I've got a Say Sky short tights on, Say Sky Pace T. Also carrying all my mandatory kit in Salomon's brilliant Advanced Skin 12 set. We have a pair of the Harrier Hilvellen Carbon Pro Poles. Super pole for these mountain races. Really comfortable for long periods of time. Come on, it's flat along here, Liga. We've got to run these bits. We can't walk the flat bits, can we, guys? We've got to, this is where we've got to push on and make the most of it. I'm sure we'll be going up again soon. The trails started to level out a bit after that initial steep start and we continued through those wooded trails. Every now and again we would kind of pop out into a beautiful meadow clearing full of wild flowers or the odd small hamlet. I often find that time and distance goes quite quickly when you are running on new and exciting trails that you haven't experienced before and myself and Liga were loving life but it was soon time to get some all important food on board. We are an hour in, so it is time to take on some calories. We're gonna try and get something down every sort of 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, we got gels, we got precision fuel and hydration, tasty chews as well. I'll save them for a little bit of a treat later. And obviously we've got the checkpoint, so I'm sure we'll get lots of cakes, biscuits, fruit, and obviously being in Europe, we should have plenty of tasty cheese, and there'll be lots of meat, but we don't eat meat, so we'll give that a miss. But let's get some calories down, give us some energy to get up to the top.
yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know I always do this to you when we're racing in the mountains, but the higher up we go, the more spectacular it gets. League is grabbing our pictures. So this isn't on the route, but we had to come over to grab a picture. Have a look at that. That is mega. I mean, come on. <laughs> yes, wow. So far, Liga, what do you think of the route? Just feeling incredibly grateful that yeah. we get to do this. Just look at it all. So grateful. <sighs> so, so grateful. So lucky. Yeah. So lucky to be out here, up in the mountains, running these awesome trails. These stunning views of one of the most spectacular places in the world. And we're both feeling good so far. Yeah. Liga's just kicked into extra gear. <laughs> Takes her about four miles to get loose and warmed up. And now she's feeling strong. So yeah, just looking forward to seeing the rest of the route, to be honest. Just soaking up a bit of tarmac, going through the first town. And in my terrible Italian, what is it, Liga? Lemon, yeah. Lemon Chasco, I think. Get in the comments below. Let me know how terrible that pronunciation was. But yeah, through the first town, a bit of tarmac, but that's all right. We're still going up. And we've got about a mile to go till we get to the first checkpoint. And I think it's just water there. So the plan is top up the bowls, get in and out pretty quick. And then we'll move on. Loving life out in the mountains of Italy. Okay, so we've made it up the climb to the first checkpoint at Gizalo. Yeah. Gizalo. So we got food, we're gonna to top our bottles up, and then we're gonna be getting out of here quick. Okay, so we stuck to the plan. We got through there pretty quick, filled up a couple of bottles, had a couple of bits of some lovely chocolate cake. That went down well, and we're just getting back onto the trails. And so far, elevation 2,566 feet, and we are working up to the next checkpoint and that's going to be at 18k here we go we're turning back into the woods a bit of fun and games i think coming up here but we're both loving life yeah yeah loving life that's for sure and we're moving well i've also got to say super impressive on the marking but really good on the marshals as well any point you go onto a main road they've got police out seeing you across making sure you're nice and safe and the guys at the checkpoint, super friendly, really helpful. So, can't fault it so far. Going really well. Once back in the woods after the aid station, we picked up a lovely section of flowing woodland trails, which were lovely to run on. And both myself and Liga seemed to pick up the pace and the miles went by nice and quick. We did still have the odd short, sharp climb to deal with, but conditions were really good underfoot and we had some stunning views of the lake along the way. A quick smile to the paparazzi and then we continued along the beautiful mountainous route all the way to the next checkpoint. We are bobbing along in the woods, loving life. We just picked up this nice descent, and it's actually the first long descent, and we're dropping down into Mazzano in my finest Italian accent again, and that'll be 18.5k in. And there's another aid station there, but these just trails, the descent is wicked. Nice, easy running, flowing, not too steep, good underfoot, great conditions just to roll along and taking the views and catch up some time as well. We're moving well, moving really well. The actual route starts off in Bellagio, like you saw, and you're at 200 meters there. And the highest point where we tap out of the main summit 
it's just under 1300 meters so you don't go up too high but as we drop down I think the last climb is going to be quite steep in parts and probably about 600 700 meters and then we get to the uh, big refuge at the top last checkpoint and then it's downhill all the way to the finish that should be great fun into Mazano and we are coming up to the checkpoint so we're gonna grab some snacks fill up the bottles and this is the start of the last big climb up to the major summit so let's get everything topped up and we'll get ready to attack that hill hopefully I haven't got all chocolate cake in my teeth I probably have but never mind so we've just been informed by the marshals that up there you can see that summit right up the top that is where we're going so should be a good trail and it's going to be mega views from the top and then like i said earlier downhill all the way to the finish so you know don't know what the fuss is about grazie thank you Liga's uh, had a bit of chocolate cake and a banana and now she's having a nice bit of italian dark chocolate i mean this really is like a run-in buffet great fun what a way to spend a, a morning and an afternoon. The sun's coming out. We're going up a beautiful climb to an incredible summit. What could be better? Come on. Living the dream. Right. Let's get up this hill. The initial part of the last climb was pretty steep but it was dry and rocky underfoot which really did help and again there were some epic views out there en route which really helped to lift the spirits. We then stumbled across a sign that said an hour and ten minutes to Refuge SEV which was actually at the top of the summit we were heading for. We thought an hour and ten minutes we'll probably be up there in 45 minutes the speed we were moving at. However, it was from this point where things got really interesting and conditions on the trails underfoot started to change rapidly. So the climb's going pretty quick. We've had some really steep bits along the way, that's for sure. Well, you had to really get on your sort of tiptoes and work hard to get up them, but it's leveled out a bit now, so definitely a bit easier on the old legs. But yeah, it's just brilliant to be back out in the mountains and it's got me all excited for the adventures that are coming later in the year as well. Our trip to Chamonix, going over to Jersey and doing round the rock. It's just gonna be mega. It's gonna be a real good year. Oh, try and catch Liga up. She's, she's moving well, she's pushing hard. Can't keep up with her. We've just arrived in this mega section of trails in the woods, super tall trees. It's pretty wet and slippy and muddy underfoot. Liga's just having a couple of energy chews, having a little bit of a low when it comes to energy, but it is a stunning, stunning trail. <laughs> Amazing. But super tricky underfoot. Way wetter, way muddier than I was expecting. It's a little bit like being in the UK, like I said earlier. 4,700 feet of elevation done. So we are definitely getting near to the top now. And I've got to be honest, we are both looking forward to that descent to the finish. Because we haven't done any climbing like this for a long time. And it is a little bit of a shock to the system. Whoop. But still loving being out there, that's for sure. So we just had a bit of a revelation out on the trail. So Liga was struggling a little bit because she hasn't done a lot of running lately because she's been a bit poorly. And I've just given her my poles. They're the wrong length. 
and she's never used poles before, but I think she's enjoying them. How are they feeling, Liga? A million times better than no poles. <laughs> what have I been doing? That's the thing, until yeah. you've used them, until you've used poles, you don't realise the benefit. Goodness me. I think she's changed her opinion on running poles. She's never wanted to use them before. And she is strong going up these big climbs, but I don't think I'm getting them back now. No, no. <laughs> I think Liga just gave a good demonstration of how bonkers this trail, I mean, it is ridiculous. Oh, We're struggling to even stand up. It is so steep, so muddy. There's very little traction. There's a tree there to hold on to, Liggles. Oh yeah? Yeah. Everybody is struggling up here. Literally no traction at all. It's just so steep. It just zaps all your energy. Oh, whoo, onwards we go. Wow. I mean, the trail shoes are pretty much useless because the mud is like clay, it's so sticky. So both our shoes are just totally clogged up. And this is a struggle. Just, uh, just a little bit of sticky mud on uh, each shoe. So you can imagine, not a lot of grip coming from the outside, <laughs> if any. And it's just so steep. I'm coming this way. Yeah, that's good. The trails might be slippy, they might be steep, but when you get up here and you get views like that across Lake Como, I mean, come on, it's gotta be worth all the effort. That is mega. Wow. What a place. What a place to come out and run. How fortunate are we to be of able body to come and do things like this. Fantastic, we should never ever take it for granted. That's for sure, as Liga takes a hundred pictures. <laughs> traction have you got from your trail shoes? <laughs> You're both sporting a uh, oh, yeah, sportiva. I mean they're just yeah. they're just pointless isn't they? Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> they're actually great shoes. It's yeah yeah. Like, you know, the lugs <laughs> no, are completely covered at this nothing point. Nothing would get yeah. you nothing yeah, would get you through. No. <laughs> Not bad. Well, the climb was definitely worth it. More mega views out on route. <laughs> We've made it to the last checkpoint before the big descent to the finish. That has to be one of the most challenging climbs I've ever done. Not only super steep, but so muddy, so slippery underfoot. Trail shoes were pretty useless, full up with mud, and you were just clinging on for dear life. Wasting a lot of energy for sure, but we're going to top the bottles up, take on some calories, and then we are heading down this awesome descent to the finish. If it's as muddy and as steep as that, it's going to be pretty treacherous, that's for sure. So we might have to take our time, but we've done it. We've cracked the big climb. Let's get the bottles filled up. Thank you very much, guys. Awesome. Thank you. Grazie, grazie. Again, Great checkpoint, super friendly, like everybody on the route, and we've got some pretty epic views of the lake, but we're heading off back into the dark woods where I think the fun and games are gonna begin because it looks muddy and slippy again, so this could get interesting. Wowzers. There is gonna be no bombing down this descent to the finish. No. As you can see, Liga displaying in the background <laughs> how slippy it is. <laughs> crazy but this is what life's about life on the edge we wanted an adventure and we are definitely getting one
Now to say that the first half of this descent was extremely challenging would be a big understatement and it definitely wasn't the long flowing downhill that we were hoping for. You had to move really slow and be super focused because the last thing you wanted was to have a slip or a trip on this descent because it was very steep and it was a long way down to the bottom. There were even parts where we were being rerouted for our own safety and this definitely kept us on our toes. So our premonition has come true. This is the wettest, the muddiest, the steepest, slippiest trail I have ever run in my life. I mean, they've got, I mean, the safety is fantastic. They've got guys at the top helping you down, guiding you through the best bits of the trail. But even then, this is so technical, so challenging. I've never run on trails like this. I've never seen anything like it. Definitely the trickiest, hardest trail. I've ever gone, ever gone downhill on them. This is just slow progress. So unfortunately we were looking forward to a nice bombing runnable descent. And uh, let me show you what we've got. Now I don't know whether the camera's doing it justice, but look at that, how steep, wet rocks. We've got leaves, tree roots, lots of sticky, slippy mud as well. This uh, keeps it very interesting. Hold on. I need soft bits. Just... Oh, yeah. oh, thank you for catching me. Whoa! You be careful. Yeah, thank you for catching me. So we just come across Sebastian on our way down and he's yes. gone on that trail with his running I poles. I want to shoot a new model of black diamond sticks. Uh, uh, they are really comfortable and ergonomic. Uh, so yeah. perfect. <laughs> awesome. I mean, I think there's a future in it. <laughs> Eco-friendly. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> well done mate, we'll see you at the finish line, yeah? Go steady! <laughs> to say the further we made it down that last descent the more runnable the route got and the better the underfoot conditions were although by now myself and Higa were definitely feeling the fact that we hadn't run in the mountains for a long time and both of our quads were feeling pretty sore now we had a few tricky water crossings to navigate which we managed to do safely and then we got our first very welcoming view of Lecco where this whole adventure had started from. It got us all excited so we put our heads down and we pushed hard to the finish. Well I think we have survived the descent. We got the town behind the camera. I reckon there's another 100 meters of descent to go and I think it's all going to be on tarmac. That was a super challenge. We've done, what, a thousand meters from that summit, coming down super steep climbs, really technical trails. Like I said, some of the hardest trails we've ever run on, but we survived to tell the tale. And that's what mountain racing is all about, getting out there, having yourself an adventure. And if you stay focused, you stay concentrated, you'll get through it in one piece. But let's get to that finish line. So we're really on the home stretch now, just across the water there, there's a big ferris wheel. That is where the finish line is. So I would say we've got about three quarters of a mile to go and it's all on the flat stuff. I'm actually quite enjoying this tarmac after some of the stuff we ran on earlier. That's it. in Lecco. This is the finishing shoot. We've both survived. Well done, Biggles. We've survived to tell the tale. It's been an epic adventure. Incredible route, super challenging. Really loved it. Glad to, thank you. Uh, I think I'm going to really love crossing the finish line. I don't think my legs are 
legs are fit for dancing, but it's been an incredible adventure out on the trails of Lake Como Trail 30k. Ups and downs along the way, literally, but we survived. And we got a pretty cool medal to show for as well. So that is the Lake Como Trail 30k done. Oh. That's a bit better. So we've had a nice cold beer down at the finish line and a portion of chips that went down really well. Feel like I've got a bit of energy back now. We've popped back to the hotel and it's actually just started to rain. So I thought I'd come out on the balcony one last time. Just want to say a massive thanks to the race organizers for putting on such an incredible uh, event. We felt so welcomed here, incredibly well organized. The route was really well marked and the marshals all the way around the route were so helpful and so friendly. We were chatting to them as we went and we had a really good time. Epic to get out on some new trails that we've never run before in this stunning location. And I would say if you are looking for a challenging 30 kilometer race in mountainous conditions, then this is definitely worth checking out. If you want an even bigger challenge, they obviously do the 250 kilometer version of the race, which goes all the way around the lake, which must be super, super tough, that's for sure. But yeah, like I say, big thanks to the race organizers. Uh, I think it's about time that I had a shower, got freshened up, and then I think we're going to treat ourselves to a nice dinner in the restaurant tonight to celebrate us getting over the finish line. Really hope you enjoyed the video, guys. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really is appreciated. And uh, we're traveling back early tomorrow morning, so we'll be back in the UK very soon. But for now, guys, like I say, thanks for watching. And as always, stay safe and keep on running.